regular Wanderer's Palace, the level 50 version, right? Yes. Right. No, we want Wanderer's Extreme. <laughs> Is there one? No. There's, okay. there's hard, but there's Yeah, no. I know about hard, but not extreme. That would be interesting. Hey, hang, on, or doing, do, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm doing the intro. Once I bring it up. Okay. Hi, right, everyone. Welcome to my Final Fantasy XIV supplemental. This will be a walkthrough of how to complete non MSQ battle content. As you saw, this was Wanderer's Palace. And. Yeah, this is a fun one. Again, we have Josia and Crash. Say hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Okay, in this one, I believe the first part has a Tonberry that is constantly uh, chasing. When you get to a certain point, yes. Hey, cool. Hey, I need eight of those. For my uh, hunting log for Immortal Flames. Oh, yeah. Uh, hang on. That guy. The, ton the Tonberry or the bird? Uh, uh, the Tonberry. I need eight Tonberry kills. Ah. Uh, so oh, we'll get eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, if you don't get eight through here... You've done something wrong. <laughs> let on the Tonberries, let me get at least one hit. That way I get credit for the credit for the kill. Now when you open certain chests in here, you will get abs like that. <laughs> I never touched it. You will yeah, get well, the bugs. When you, when you get close, you get the uh, abs. Yeah. That is oh. one. Because it gives you the uh, the blunt Aeolian scimitar. Which is needed for the relic weapon. So, I mean, I guess this could be considered the first I'm part of... The Tonberry Stucker to catch them. Which, generally, you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, he usually doesn't ever catch you. That's why. If you're fast enough, he'll just give up and go home. Is this just a generic? Mostly just try not to get sneezed on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No sneezies. Yeah, we'll let him do the attack. Mm -hmm. Uh, he missed the moldy sneeze. <laughs> yes, they can miss. It's rare. Well, he didn't miss. I dodged. <laughs> Inhale. Same thing. I just... That's like the only thing you really have to watch for is that inhale. <laughs> uh, I'm not crash. attacking. You I have your tank you. stance on. There. Yeah, the reduced immunity. HP recovery via healing magic is reduced. Oh, just come over here and beat on him. <laughs> Where's the fun in that? I was going to say, or get sucked up. <laughs> hey, there we go. HP via recovering healing HP recover via healing magic is reduced. Can be cured with Asuna. Okay, li like we said the last in the last uh, supplemental. Uh, see the blue bar above the status? That means it can be cured with an immunity. With an immunity. Wow. It can be cured with an Asuna. 
come up here, click the Nymean device to open the door. Turn the wheel. Or if you have fun with it, pull the lever. <laughs> pull the lever. If you get that reference, I will be surprised. Now, this is one area where the stalker could conceivably catch up if you take too long to kill the gas. Yeah. Okay, grab the lantern oh. oil. Yep. Right, she's got the oils. Yep, the tonberries will drop them. <laughs> They will be and I have needed. all the tonberries, so you don't have to worry about. They will be needed for, for this part right here. Rusted Nymean devices. I got this one. I got the other one. And the reason there's three is because there's a third device after you open the door. Right here. Now, this is one spot where you do have to play dodge the Tonberry Stalker. Yeah, that guy. Uh, no, because there's one that likes to wander around in this section. Uh, I need... I, I need the Soldiers of Nim. The skeletons. Okay, you can kill him. I need three skeletons. And then how many Nimians do I need? See this Tonberry guy. Ow. This, this Tonberry stalker will go down the middle area. Soldiers. I'm bringing you one. Aaron, do you need these? There are three more behind you. Oh, I need... Yes, I do. Thank you. Eh, there we go. They can die. Yeah, the, the Tonberry Stalker will go... Uh-oh. Middle up here where there is a Nymean device. Go figure. I am capped on seals. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to be careful when you come and hit the device here. For that reason. Yep. And there's also a treasure coffer over here, I believe. Yep, I just hit it. Yeah, just the when, one, though? Mm -hmm. okay. When you get there, eight little beetles will pop along that wall, the same side as the coffer, and they will instantly aggro you. There's also a coffer over on this side that does the same thing. Yep. Okay, so now we'll get to see it. So whoever hits the coffer, such as Aaron, go hit the coffer. You will see that the beetles will instantly aggro him. Nope. Not for that one. They must have changed that one. Oh, wow, they did. How rude of them. And usually the tank will go through to re aggro the. the. yeah, that guy. The giant Tonberry? Mm hmm. So that everybody else can run through. This just saves everybody in the party. Okay, what is his deal? Uh, mostly he summons lots of ads and he will randomly target one party member and follow them around casting like fire or something on them. Okay. So basically just avoid everything and kill the ads. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nor normal normal boss mechanics. Yep. Okay. We'll let a couple ads pop out. Just as example. See if he'll do the target. See, there's white, green, purple. I 
I think he targeted me this time. Because that's the second fire he's casted. It, it could be a different spell. Let's... Oh, that there we go. Here it comes. Yep. He will randomly focus on someone else. And mm -hmm. just... Doesn't matter if the tank has all the hate in the world. That person will gain all the hate in the world for that limited amount of time. Yep. Yep. And then it's rinse and repeat. Yep. So. And also for these, it's not worth it to run to uh, use these for leveling. At least I don't think. No. Yeah, any of the any of the evens. Another Tonberry Stalker will pop, which I just did. And again, if you take too long killing the ad, there is a chance that it will catch up. Lantern oil. Mm -hmm. I've got it. Okay. There's the second one. And grabbing it now. And a big boss. And mapping the realm just got hit. Okay, big boss, Tonberry King. I will say the ending cutscene after you finish the dungeon in this one is quite funny, even though the events happen off screen. Which is why I have the uh, cutscenes turned on, even though on some I've done them before. Okay, uh, is there. For this boss, there will be a ring of Tonberries that will show up around the edge of the room, and they will all head straight for the Tonberry King. You want you want a minimal amount of them to actually get to the Tonberry King, because the King will absorb them, basically, and power up. And for every one that he absorbs, his Tonberry's grudge <coughs> Sorry. His Tonberry's grudge what? His Tonberry's grudge will get stronger for every Tonberry he absorbs. So you want to let as few as possible through. Is it Tonber or is it Tonberry's grudge or everyone's grudge? It's everyone's grudge. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the everyone's grudge move, yeah. Yeah. Basically it's the throat it's a throat stab on on steroids. And I think it hits room wide, doesn't it? No, no it's single target. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or was that eleven where everyone's grudge hit everything in the AOE? That's, that was the eleven one, yeah. Okay. Generally, about two to three stacks is survivable uh, on the everyone's grudge. Any higher than that, and you risk uh, potentially one shotting. But nowadays, a lot of people will ignore the ads and just focus the boss. Well, let's get out. Let's get after it. You want to run it, or you want to just burn it? Uh, just burn it. As you saw, first right as right it, yeah. <laughs> the eight enemies appear. Run away, Ora. Okay, I'm going to do the outro for this supplemental after the cutscene.
Did not show it. Howdy, everyone. This... Welcome to my Final Fantasy XIV Supplemental. This will be a walkthrough of how to complete non-MSQ battle content. This is the second of the Relic Weapon Dungeon Trial questline. Uh, this is, as you saw, a Relic Reborn, the Chimera. Um, yeah, so what's the... I haven't done this one in forever. This chimera is like every other chimera, chimera in every jungle. So basically just avoid everything. Yep. Okay. Um, you've got Ram's voice, which is the AOE freeze around the mom. Um, Dragon's voice, which is an AOE further out. So you have to stay close. Your standard Konals. Um, he's got the Chimera... Um, the targeting? Targeting orb, yeah. All, all the same stuff. Okay, so we'll do a Ram's voice, a Dragon's voice, a Conal, and then the targeting. Okay. And, and any new ones after that? There, I don't think there is any others. It's been a while since I've done a relic weapon myself, so. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been it's been a minute. Well, let's find out. And you will have to pay attention. Ram's breath. Oh, Ram's breath is left, and Dragon's voice is right. Oops. Yeah, oh, but that's the thing is. That's the voices, not the breath. Ah, okay. There's the lion's breath that unavoidable. Yeah, that's the standard. It may not have it. It does. Okay. Ram's Breath again. Ra Ram's Breath is on the mob's right side. Dragon's Breath is on the mob's uh, left side. Uh, Lion's Breath is what? in front. Scorpion Stig is in back. The one that has blue eyes and the one that has uh, purple eyes. Yeah, the... Oh, thank you. Okay, uh, the ram, the ram moves will come from the, uh, the, the ram's with, head, the ram's head with the blue eyes. And then the dragon move will come from the dragon head with the purple eyes. Basically the one that is up because once they do the move, one will be up and one will be down. Yeah, I, I don't think that this... Well... Ram's, Ram's voice. voice. Out. There yep. There's I that one. Retract my statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just took it a while. Yep. But it does have the breaths, which I think are unique to this mob. Yeah. Nope, the other one's got the breaths, too. <laughs> they all do. And there's a dragon's voice. Dragon's voice coming close or really far away. There you go. And we should be getting the heat seeking orb here shortly. Give him a push. The hell was that? It that's covered entire, it covered the entire floor and ice. That's new. But we don't slide around on it. it just okay. It just does a area wide AOE dragon voice. voice. And here's oh. the targeting move. Rams no. Ram's Keeper is... Yeah, that was Ram's Keeper. No, no, Ram's Keeper yeah. was the... Uh, mm -hmm. There's the orb. It's following... Uh, oh, and crash. when you get the orb, it will pulse a couple of times. 
and then dissipate. If you notice, Aaron, the uh, horns blowing. I told yeah. You which one's that guy? I think. Oh. And now the blue ones. Ah, it'll tell you what mode it's in. Okay, yep. I never noticed that. And targeting mob? Me. Mm-hmm. And then it'll stop, and then it'll pulse, pulse, and be gone. And I think that's it. Yep. Okay, that was part two of the seven dungeon trial quest line for getting a relic weapon. The first part of a relic weapon. Howdy, everyone. This is part three of the relic weapon uh, dungeon trial quest line. And to poor keep. And it has to be Amdapur Keep to do this. It can't be, uh, what was the other one? Um, Lost City of Amdapur? That one. It cannot be that one. It has to be Amdapur Keep. Basically, this one, you can just pretty much kill anything that targets you. Certain lunatic followers will attempt to summon an ad. So basically, just kill everything. Couldn't remember if there was a chest over there or not. Does this place have any chest? I don't think so. It yeah. does. Oh, okay. In fact, there's one in this open area. Nope. I'm gonna head right to it. Hang on, what? What Aaron comes? Okay. Uh, for ex exp grinding, uh, don't do any of the dungeons that end in zero. This particular chest has a good chance of dropping a minion. Uh, that Demon one. Demon brick. Yep. <laughs> Which I already have. I has him too. Okay, lunatic priest, I believe. Uh, kill him, and then he summons another part uh, phase two to the fight. Yes. Okay. You cannot fully kill him. He will go invincible while he summons the second part. Oh, you have my your bad. On you. <laughs> I took it off. Yep, he chilled. And he leaves, stays at point one. And then this guy will raise that big pile of stones in the back of the room. That and pile. Crash, don't kill it. Yeah, like that. And this big guy will slowly advance through the room. Periodically stopping to do a massive AOE. That one. Yeah. And, and then he gets the little guy. And you want to get him killed. Oh, 
open the treasure coffer, then go through the ethereal flow. Is there anything that way? What's... No. Uh, a couple of ads, but that's about it. And a chest. There's a oh, chest there is a chest. There. Okay. Yes, there is a chest back there. Yes, sir. Oh, yep, 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 yep. yep. There is just one way right back there. there. Yeah, you can just see it. I'm glad there's no quote-unquote casting time on treasure chests, like there is in Ocarina of Time. <laughs> now, as you hey, through, Ocarina. As you go through this section, you'll see a bunch of stone gargoyles. And as you get near them, certain ones will come to life. Just like yep. that. Now this Dullahan here is going back and forth. He can be dodged if you so choose. You wait for him to travel back the other way, or you can just kill him. As and then you can, you can see, get the chest up there. As you can see, you have an hour and a half to do this. Whole dungeon. Let's go through keep killing all of the gargoyles that wake up. <laughs> While well, they're killing, I'm going to go get the treasure coffer. And I'll go get more gargoyles. Here's a cartoon I haven't seen in forever. Gargoyle. Oh, the fun boss. Yeah, the demon wall. This one is interesting because if you look on the sides, you can be knocked off. And there is a time limit to this fight. Yes, because the demon wall will be slowly traveling towards you. If you fall down, you will die. <laughs> yep. Just don't jump off the edge to prove the point. I wasn't <laughs> going to. Uh, he does have a knockback move. Yes. So you want to be facing straight at him. Uh, he will. Do, his his main attack is he will cover either the middle of the area here with a black substance or he will cover both sides with a black substance you don't want to be standing in it okay let's do a couple of the uh a couple of the mechanics and then kill him okay yeah See, that? there's the purple. Yep, don't be in that. Which I will show. Because if you get in it, you get hit with slow. Yeah, so I think slow. he does. I think he does the middle, and then immediately does the sides. Oh. Yeah, the middle one gives heavy. The outer ones give slow. So if you have to get hit by, there's the repel. That's the knockback. Doesn't knock you back a lot, it just just enough though. Yeah, especially if you're angled wrong. So if you have to get hit by one, get hit by the outer one, since that's just slow. I honestly didn't realize that each set did a different uh, status. I didn't either. Well, <laughs> it was we always. Know. It was always stay out of the purple goop. Well, 
That's what this video series is for. <laughs> what the middle one gives you heavy, and the outer set gives you slow. When in doubt, most of the time, with that repel, I would say take the heavy. This way, at least, it keeps you to the center. Yeah. The, as you're going through here, this, you will get randomly targeted by fireballs. Those are from the succubus that are casting. Unless they change that mechanic. <laughs> I know they used to do that. Well, there's only one succubus so far. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Nope, there's the void. And a boss. Yeah, and this boss has a few mechanics. Well, while the cutscene is going, go ahead and explain them. Okay. Uh, there are four statues around the room. Uh, periodically, during the boss fight, there will be a massive attack in the middle of the room that you need to hide behind the statues to avoid. For this particular boss, you also don't want to be behind it because it has a tail swipe. It's generally recommended for the tank to take it to the back of the room and face it towards the back. You'll also randomly have the gargoyles come to life and you will have to deal with them as ads. Does that take away the pots or no? No, it does not take away the pots. Okay, do the pots break? I don't believe so. His AoE damages that you hide behind the gargoyles can kill the statues, so you will not have that add. But it doesn't always kill them. Any other... Any other stuff, uh, mechanics? Um, he's got a stomp. Um, be careful with it's an AOE damage. A standard gaze attack. Um, which is why the tank usually tabs it face into the front. Um, and when in doubt, never attack the hind end. Oh, this Always from, from the, the sides. Yeah, I mentioned the tail swipe. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and that's so, why. Question: What uh, is the tank making it face the way it is currently, or the other way? The other, other way. way. Okay, so basically, what I've been doing. Yep. yep. Okay. Always run through the mob and having face a wall. That's what that's what a tank should be doing, so that the only thing that the people behind will have to worry about is maybe the tail swipe. And any distance, any of the ranged jobs won't have to worry about it. It won't trigger tail swipe with ranged. Only physical DPS um, from behind will trigger the tail swipe. I believe there is one other attack that I think I remember. It's a uh, lightning line that I think you break by going behind the statue. Yep, yep. That's the yeah. other one. That's the other one. That's okay. why it's best if you have rage DPS to stand behind a statue. Uh, so this way they could step in and then step out. If they get the line. Okay, so... That's pretty much it. Yep. Go okay. get them. So, 
Time to get to work. And there's, see. Yep, there's the tail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And then. It has a rotten breath attack. Okay, I guess periodically it will do Telswipe now. Because I haven't touched it and it just Telswiped. I think it's just someone has to be behind it. We were, oh, there's the imminent catastrophe. You want to hide behind the statues? Yep, but the statue I'm between you and the orb. I've You're already... Wrong. You're all right. I think it's as long as someone is within that conal range, it will do the attack. Oh, there's, there's one of the ads. Not anymore. You lose the statue. Yes. And <laughs> you, you put crash on range of that. Oh no, that's all right. Cause see, that gives concussion, and that um, anyone's dealt by a blunt weapon or causing damage over time. So basically, it's a minor bleed effect. When you get hit with tell swipe. That's why if you're going to be attacking with your tank, you want to be up here at the front quarters. A catastrophe? Imminent catastrophe. Let's see here. There's another one of the... Obviously, you want to uh, kill the boss before you lose all the statues, otherwise you can't hide from that eminent catastrophe. Oh, oh yeah. And it'll periodically link and put down one of those... Uh, orbs. Pulsing, uh, pulsing orbs. Another one. Oh. <laughs> he he has a lot of movements. It's a lot of get out of this, get out of that pathways. Just like now there's another catastrophe. So we'll just get rid of him. Yep. And a lot of bosses from this dungeon pretty much forward start becoming more movement reliant. Okay, and that was part three. Howdy everyone, this is part four of the Relic Weapon Quest dungeon line against uh, the Hydra. And is it just stay out of everything and kill it? Uh, the Hydra will put down alternating pools of ice and fire. Make sure they stay out of the center of the room because the Hydra will periodically move to the middle of the room and do an attack called Fear itself. If you are not right next to the Hydra, you will get hysteria and start uncontrollably running around the room. I want to do that uh, once. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, uh, I believe it also summons one to two adds that need to be kept away from the Hydra and killed. What if they aren't? Uh, I believe they link to the Hydra and it gets a boost. Oh, okay. Until the adds are killed? Yes. Okay. Um, so... Hysteria, link, and then kill it? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Anything else, or... 
Not that I can think no, of. No, not really. Okay. Just like I said, make sure death. I'll stay way over here in case I get targeted by one of them. Ow. I got infirmity. What does that do? Immunity. HP recovery via healing magic is reduced. Yeah, infirmity. Radiant breath. Okay. White breath again. I dodged it that time. <laughs> I believe the fear itself comes at about 50% health, but I could be wrong. <laughs> it's been one. Well, go ahead and get them down so we can start the ads and everything. Ball of ice. Yep, there's the ice. Ball of fire. fire. Nope, there's the, there's the ad. Probably should have let the ad live for a second to see what he did. He's gonna eat me! <laughs> he is fast, too. Yep. Yeah. He's a little quick. Oh. Mean thrash. He does have a tail swipe. Oh. Ball of ice. Ball of fire. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Okay, let's see what the yeah. ad does. Oh, yeah, okay, so the ad popped up again. Yeah, let's see what it does. Doesn't really do anything, I don't think. Oh, here we go. Here's health. Get in the middle. I'll let y'all get in the middle. Okay. I have no control. I am moving my controller. I can move the camera is about it. That could be dangerous if there's a lot of the fire and ice pools on the ground. Yep. <laughs> so you definitely want to keep the middle of the room clear. Okay, so the ads don't really do anything. They might have changed the ads. That's possible. Okay, so that's basically it then. Okay, go ahead and kill it. And that was part four of the quest line parts five six and seven are going to be the ifrit garuda and titan hard trials in that order hello everyone and this is part five of the quest line against a more powerful version of ifrit also known as ifrit hard there are, I believe, the same mechanics. It's just you can't go too fast. Otherwise, I believe it's a TPK if you go too fast. 
you'll push him through the phases too fast and he'll instantly enrage. We could always do that once to show it off. Yeah, let's do that on the first one. Since it's just the very first, so you, so people can see uh, what happens when you push it too fast. Do all the hard fights do that, or just this one? If, if it's the only one that you can really risk an enrage on, the others are pretty easy to avoid, avoid the enrage. Okay. All right, are we ready for it? Yeah, let's let's do the the reg the quick first. There it is, invincible. <laughs> okay, that's what happens when you go too fast. Well, we'll we'll redo it, and then do the do it the proper way. <laughs> yeah. Some say too fast. Uh, I say fifty nine seconds was not fast enough. <laughs> okay, so okay, so that was that one. Okay, go ahead and go back, and we'll. Do it again. <laughs> yep. This time, be, slow. Used to be that you, if you did it too fast, he'd auto. Auto well, the what party. It, what it is is if you're doing it at level. That's the big thing at level. If you push too quickly, he gets to the nails and becomes invincible, and you can't kill the nails either. Uh, and he just hellfire kills you. Yeah, he just starts but, spamming hellfire. But with having 90s out, it doesn't, it's over and set. It's over and done with. But it's mainly when you're doing it at levels where you have to pace yourself to get to the nails and then take out all the nails before you can finish it. But we can do some of the other mechanic okay this is the actual mechanic part of the fight and Vulcan Burst is a small A room with a knockback That's what I'm working on. Eruptions, watch your feeding. Yep. Eruption is also a blue mage spell, which you learn from Ifrit. Oh, this is the dash across. Ow. I gotcha. Oh, standing in the outer ring of fire will kill you. Pretty much instantly, uh, even a 90. Uh, should I worry about the nails or no? No, no don't worry about the nails. I could use a heal, though. Thank you. If you do not kill the nails in time, the hellfire that a frick does will be massively powered up. So you want to kill the nails as fast as possible. Oh, here's the multi-dash. You want to try not to be in line with any of those efforts. I think I got yes. lucky in my placement. 
You can stand between them. It's very, very, very tiny. Yep, Radiant Plum. Because we need... I think he may only do the tethers on EX. I don't know if he does the hard mode. I think it may only do... And then he does the big one where there's only one safe area. Howdy, this is part six of the uh, quest line. And for, apparently for this one, it is more difficult to not beat her fairly quickly. Even at level. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll explain the mechanics and then... This is going to be a short part because if it's pretty difficult to uh, to do at level to not kill her quickly, we'll just kill her quickly after explaining the mechanics. Always so creepy with that smile. Yeah, just a bit. Yeah. Okay, the biggest one is you've got the four pillars in the middle. Make and no, square. they are not the kind of pillars you fluff. <laughs> uh, those are used when she charges up her aerial blast. Uh, when she reaches half health, you hide behind those to avoid dying to the aerial blast. And she will be in the center of the four pillars, not where she's currently at. Yes, and she will summon little feather adds that will try and destroy the pillars. You want to kill them as fast as possible. Uh, oh, when she gets low enough, she will summon two adds that will be tethered to her. Normally, what you're supposed to do is uh, the off tank and another... Uh, DPS would draw away the two ads and kill them before you go back to killing Garuda. Because I think the ads, when they're tethered, they make her invincible. Yes, she's yeah. invincible as long as the ads are still tethered. We can attempt to do it normally, but... Yeah, we'll attempt to do it normally. It's just, if we go really fast, we have no control over that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any others? Uh, no. If she gets to it, we can explain it. Okay. You want to worry about the ads, Crash? Yeah. <laughs> she will randomly target you with an aerial blast, just a throw portion. You want to stay away from the pillars as much as possible, because it will destroy the pillars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything that she does will do damage to the pillars, and we don't want that. See, there's the random shot. You saw it really Crash. quick. Right about where I am standing at, the Jumping Paladin, is whereabouts you want your medics and your other ranged DPSs. It gives enough buffer that you don't end up getting too close to the pillars. Everybody wants to hide in the middle of the pillars. Okay, I believe this is... 
Uh, feathers should be. Yep, this should this will be the feathers. She does the attack down the middle. It should be the feathers. Yeah, there it is. Countless feathers rain from the sky. There. <laughs> okay, I believe this is yeah. yeah. This is what we were talking about. This is more feathers. And then they're gonna try and destroy pillars. Oopsie, there's one of the pillars partially destroyed. It'll mm. still shield, it's just. You'll take more damage by a partial pillar than a full pillar. Okay, here, here's the aerial blast, so you hide behind the pillar. And then after this, she will put down a new edge to the arena. There we go. Yeah, see, she'll drop these feathers and they will become tornadoes. Ow. Yeah. They will also knock you around if you're... And here she comes with her aerial blast again, I think. Oh, no, this abs. is the abs. Yep. I get her. Yeah, you. Has she gotten to the uh, thing we need to talk about or no? This was it. The, it was the. The feathers. Oh, okay. The feather tornadoes. Yeah, because this is the only other thing that she does. Okay. Yeah, she, no, for she, hard. I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, for hard, yeah, because I think that other mechanic I was thinking of is an extreme. Uh, where she puts down the, 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 the outer ring. The area, yeah. Yeah, no, that's the outer ring. There we go. And that is part six of the quest chain. Okay, and here is part seven, and the final dungeon slash trial of the Relic Weapon quest. The first part of the Relic Weapon quest line, I keep forgetting to say that. And it is against Titan, also known as Thong Boy. And you will see what we mean in just a second. Okay. Uh, the ones, the one that I remember is he will ground pound twice and this area will shrink twice. It's after every jump. Yeah. yeah. Um, be careful of mountain buster. It can knock you off the edge. And you cannot be raised when you get knocked off the edge. Correct. Doesn't matter your level, even a 90, if you get knocked off. That's your toast. it. Yeah. I don't know. Does he do the boulder ones here, or is that extreme? He, he, he does that on all of them. He does that even on uh, normal. I think he's talking about the exploding ones. Oh, yeah. Those. The bo the, uh, lines and that I don't know. Them. Yeah, the boulder bombs. So we'll take this one slow, somewhat slow. Those are just placed detonations. You just got to alternate your stepping. He also does the in a circle and they explode uh, like clockwise or something. Yeah, they do a rotation clock. Yeah, quote, boom, or yeah. Okay, right, and getting. this is, this is, yeah. And also periodically he will encase someone in stone you want to be careful when you get them out because he might decide to drop a landslide underneath them and that's why he would call him thong boy that's landslide now for anyone who has issues with, the, with dodging the landslides see one, 
One great big thong. One trick that I discovered when I was having tons of lag on this guy was that after you move out of the way, jump. Because the jumping forces the game to update your position. Little tip for people who are having issues with the uh, with lag. Once that move happens, jump. Move all the way to the landslide and just jump in place. <laughs> I mean, we can speed it up just a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we definitely right. can. Okay, here's the first one. You'll see that a red line. Go to the red line, but not past it. Because that portion of the arena will disappear. <laughs> the arena and is the, now smaller. The closer you are to the red line, the less damage you will take. Yep. I kind of like uh, shockwave. <laughs> okay, here is number two. I don't think he'll do it a third time. No, he goes to three. He takes it all the way to the yellow. Only on EX. On EX, he takes it all the way to the yellow. On hard, he does not. Uh, here's the clockwise bomb boulders. Mm -hmm. So, so you... You'll... You want to go to the last one that drops. Which is always a center. And then... Oh, and don't be in that. Like that. See? And, and, See? There goes, <laughs> and there goes Crash. That's what we oh, meant by... Uh, Ooh, and heal. then he jumps on me. They actually changed it. You can be raised. Now the heart will appear. Oh, and, wow. And then you have to... Can I get a heal, please? You're going to have to break me out of the jail. Yeah, because he won't have clemency for a while. As Red Mage, I have uh, give me that. I love this music. Just the fact that they're just like blah, blah, blah. Um, here's the boulder bomb explosions. Yep. That's why I waited to do that to raise before I waited till after to raise. You got tank stamp on again, Crash. Yeah, I know I put it on. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I think that is the uh, the fight right there. Yeah. Okay, so he will go three, but on EX he will go four. Yeah, because it, it it's the, this yellow area is. Yeah, the, the yellow area is the. Uh, the battlefield in EX. Yeah. No, so he goes one more down. There we go. And that just so to prove, wasn't intentional, but to prove that yes, even a 90 can die to a low level dungeon. I think they changed the, uh, the raise part of that. A lot of people used to get annoyed about, especially you couldn't see anything on the battlefield originally because your viewpoint was stuck down at the bottom. <laughs> and then they changed it so that you could get raised too. I didn't know that they changed the raise effect. Yeah, neither did I. But okay. that is Titan. Da, 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 da. Okay, and now, now I'm going to do the actual outro for this. Uh, 
Okay, I'd like to thank you for watching this supplemental walkthrough for Final Fantasy XIV, the Relic Weapon for A Realm Reborn. If this video is pleasing to your palate, please leave a thumbs up. Any comments will be read from the comment card below. If you'd like to stay up to date on more of my content, please subscribe. This is Renegade Mac and Cheese clocking out, and I'll see y'all at the next serving.